there. We're here from Van Nuys Labradoodles today, and we have the Cafe Noir Litter. These are medium, multi-generation Australian Labradoodle puppies, and this is their seven-week update. And this is the last update before the first big day, and that is allocation day. So next video, we are going to find out which puppy has picked which family for their forever family. So today we're going to do a little update on each of the puppies, tell you a little bit about each of them, and we're, then we're going to talk a little bit about socialization with your puppies and what we mean when we say positive reinforcement, one of the key buzzwords that you hear today. Now you'll hear the puppies in the background a lot today. They were outside, they've just come in. They're big dogs now, so they have lots of voices and have lots of fun playing with each other. So Reynolds going to hand the puppies back and forth to me and you'll hear them making all sorts of commotion in the background. So let's get started with the puppies. This is Blue Collar Boy, Dark Blue Collar Boy, and he's one of the parties in the litter. This little puppy is a real sweetheart. He is lots of fun. He likes to party, probably because he is a party. And he's also very calm and very relaxed when he's with somebody. He's an affectionate boy and he's really keen on being with people just as much as he enjoys being with the other dogs. So he's playful but, but also very affectionate and a lovely balanced little fellow. So he's going to be great in pretty much any sort of family environment. He's going to get along very well with children and adults alike and he's also a puppy that would be really good for a retired couple because he's fun and he's playful, but he's not overly energetic where he wants to be go, go, go all the time. So that's our dark blue collar boy, our little sweetheart. So now we're going to have the next puppy come along. And this is pink collar girl. Hello, pink. Now, whoopsie, there we go with the dark blue collar. Pink collar girl, if you'll remember from our other videos, is a sable. So that's why you'll see that her chocolate color is a little bit different from everyone else's in the litter. It's a little bit lighter, and as time goes on, it's going to continue to lighten up and clear out, as, as we call it. So she'll be a, a very light brown to almost a dark caramel color when she matures. She even may be um, a lighter caramel color. It's, it's a little bit early to tell how much she's going to lighten up. So Pink Collar Girl is a go-getter. She is full of vim and vinegar and loves to have a lot of fun. She really enjoys playing with her litter mates. She's crazy about going outside. But she too, just like Dark Blue Collar Boy, she's very affectionate. She likes spending time with people. She tends to be a little bit independent. She is quite happy to be on her own. She doesn't mind so much if the other puppies aren't around playing with her. She's okay on her own. Oh, she's eating the foam off my microphone now, so we'll just take that from her, because that's probably not the best thing for her to eat. Hey, <laughs> little monkey. As you know, they're all into eating everything right now. So that's Pink Collar Girl, our little full of mischief girl. And now we have Light Blue Collar Boy. Hello, sweetie. Now, Light Blue Collar Boy, you can see his tail's going, and that is pretty much constant with this little dynamo. He's the smallest puppy in the litter, but you can see he's full of it. He's always going. He is a real going concern. I'm going to pick him up because he's probably not going to stay on the table nicely. He's also super affectionate, and he too is going to eat the microphone. They all are going to try and eat the microphone, I think, this week. They're pretty funny. So light blue collar boy is going to be great with children and with a young, very active family. He is on the go constantly. He likes to stop and say hi and get some cuddles, but his main focus in life is really having fun and play, play, play. So that's our light blue collar boy. Now here we have orange collar boy. There we go. Now light blue is the smallest in the litter and orange collar is the largest in the litter. He is a sturdy boy. Now this fellow, this is Mr. Mello. He is just a doll. He is very, very, very focused on people and wanting to be with them, wanting to get hugs and kisses and to be loved by them. 
that is the main thing for him in life that makes him happy. He always wants to be around where there's a human and he's always the first one to greet us in the morning, the first one to come up and say, hey, here I am, big me. And he's full of kisses. I'm just trying to keep him away from my microphone there. Full of kisses, full of affection. So Mr. Orange Collar Boy, he's going to be pretty suitable for any family situation. He's, he's outgoing, but he's also a nice, quiet, calm puppy, and he is exceedingly affectionate. So that's him. And now coming up, we have Mr. Green Collar Boy. Here we go, Mr. Orange. Hi, Green. Oh, my goodness, somebody's complaining they're not the star of the show. So here's Mr. Green Collar Boy. Mr. Green Collar is a very nice balance. He is a thoughtful dog, but he's also very outgoing. He likes to play with his litter mates and have a fun time, but he's also quite happy to be off on his own, watching what they're doing and saying, hmm, I'll see if that's something I want to join in with or not. And he loves to be held and he loves to be petted. He is very people focused, very similar to Orange Collar Boy in that respect. He likes to, be, likes to have his ears stroked all the time and he's always one of the ones who's anxious to come over and, and get some pets. So he's a really nice boy and he's going to be suitable as well for pretty much any family situation. He's, uh, he doesn't require a hugely active family, uh, but he'll be quite happy to go and participate in any activities that any family might have in store for him. So that's our green collar boy. Now we're going to look at Mr. Red. Hi, Mr. Red. There we go, green. Now, Mr. Red Collar, you can see his tail is going to. He is another one of the puppies who's very affectionate, who really enjoys people, and is quite happy just to have a person around him. He's fine with the other dogs. He likes to play, but he's also much more interested in just having a human contact. He really lives for that. And he's a little quieter than some of the other dogs. He'll be watching, he'll go play and he'll do his thing and run around. He chases the toys, chases the ball, has a good time with that. And then he's like, okay, that's enough. Now I'm gonna come back and sit down and I'm gonna get a hug. Um, he's always on my lap when I'm in with the puppies. He's one of the first ones that's on to my lap looking for some cuddles and some kisses. So he's a really nice, affectionate boy. And he's the type of dog that's going to do well, again, with multiple different situations. He'll be good with younger children because he's very patient and very gentle, and you'll see how calm he is. And he'd also be good with an older couple who just want to have a nice, calm puppy in their lives. And there's a nice little kiss from Mr. Red. Thank you for that kiss. So that's Mr. Red. Now coming up is Mr. Brown Collar. Mr. Brown Collar is quite different from Mr. Red. Mr. Brown Collar is similar to Mr. Light Blue Collar. He is the life of the party. Again, he's a party. The two parties are pretty much enjoying a life as a party. This guy is hilarious. He does tricks. He, when he goes outside, he spins around in circles like he's a trained circus dog. He jumps, he tries everything. He is outgoing, he's adventuresome. He's bold and he is super confident. This dog needs an active family with kids because he loves kids. He loves people. And when he sees you, he just wants to lick you to death. He isn't one that stays still very often. He's mostly one who's always on the go. So he needs a nice, young, active family or an older active family. It doesn't matter what the age is. He just needs someone who's active and probably children who are a little bit older and can tolerate a dog who is busy. So that is Mr. Brown Collar. Next up, we have Miss Peach Collar. She is the other girl in the litter. There we go. Now, Miss Peach, she is quite different from the other dogs. She is very introspective. She is soulful. She's affectionate and she's very placid. She's relaxed and she's also very independent. She's not that fond of playing with all of the other puppies. She will play with them, but that's not her big thing in life. She likes the other dogs, but she is much more the type of dog who enjoys being on her own and thinking things through for herself. Right, Peach? Yes. She's a lovely girl, very balanced, very calm, 
and just super affectionate for her people. You'll see she has very strong eye contact with me. She's always looking to me for her cues and to communicate with me what she's thinking as well. So she's a lovely puppy. Now, Reynolds just getting one of the other ones we haven't seen yet. And while he's doing that, I want to talk to you a bit about what's going on with the whole litter and their coats this week. And their coats are starting to what we call lift. So you'll see here on Peach how she has some of these bits of her coat that look like she's having a bad hair day and that, or maybe that she got electrocuted. So this is when their coats start stop being flat, like they are at the back here, and they start to come up, and that's what gives them the texture and the wave in their coat. Now, Reynolds got the last puppy here for us to take a look at, and this is Mr. Purple Collar. Hello, handsome. So you can see that lifting of the coat I was talking about on purple here. Now you may remember last week when we did Mr. Purple Collar, I said that he was a little bit shy and a little bit hesitant, and he was a little bit nervous when we did his assessment. That's all changed. Mr. Purple has come out of his shell, and while he's still a very soulful and affectionate boy, he is also much more confident now and much happier with life. He is out the door quicker than anyone else now. He's happy to play and just really enjoying himself much more. So it's interesting how their temperaments can change so much, even just in the space of a week. So you can see he's, he's still a little bit shy of being in front of the camera, but he is a lot more relaxed than he was before. So I'm going to give Mr. Purple back to Reynolds so that he doesn't get too stressed from being in, the, in front of the camera. Oh, and the type of family that would be great for Mr. Purple is somebody who is a family that's quieter, a little bit more of a calm environment, not one with a lot of small children running around or a lot of activities going on. So that's all the puppies and a little bit of an update about how each of them are developing them so far. Uh, the other thing is Oshana. Oshana went home to her guardians yesterday. So her guardians were just thrilled to see her again. Uh, they hadn't been able to visit her while she was here with the puppies because they were away in Palm Springs. So Oshana is now retired. That's it. She's done with her puppies. They're all weaned, of course, and she's off to enjoy a beautiful retirement on Salt Spring Island, well-deserved and well-earned. So I know her family is really happy to have her back, and we miss her a great deal and hope that we'll still see her from time to time. Now this week what I want to talk to you a bit about is socializing the puppies and, and also what positive reinforcement means. So we do a lot with the puppies while they're here with us to desensitize them. And by that I mean we expose them to a lot of situations that are new. We make a lot of different strange noises. We take steel bowls, we throw them on the floor, literally we throw them on the floor, make big bang clank sounds. Uh, the rental drives up to the door of the doodle den and he honks the horn in the car and so that they get familiar with that sound. They can hear a vacuum pretty much every day. They can hear the washing machine and the dryer going. We have a TV in here for the dogs and uh, we use YouTube extensively to play many different sounds so they hear traffic, they hear dogs barking, they hear a variety of different types of music, they hear fireworks, they hear thunder and lightning, all sorts of situations that they will hear in real life. And we play that at a very high volume, and at first they'll go, oh, what's that? And then they get used to it. So that's what we mean by desensitization. So we do a lot of sound desensitizing for the puppies. Also, when we have them outside, we get them on multiple different surfaces so that they're used to walking on different surfaces. So you don't have your puppy when you go for a walk and you're on the sidewalk and all of a sudden you come to a wooden bridge, your puppy doesn't go, holy cow, what's that? I'm not stepping on that. So they're used to all those different things and those different environments. Uh, we do let them hear traffic quite a bit too during the day on YouTube. We also make them watch hockey and football and listen to uh, HGTV. So they hear a whole lot of different things. And we play music for them as well. Quite a wide variety of different music types, so they become accustomed to that. So that's all desensitizing. And we start with that right, in the, right from the very beginning, from when we're touching their feet all the time, when we're touching them, even before they can see and hear. 
Now that's different from socializing them. Socializing them is how they get along with one another and how they get along with new people. So we have a series of people that we know, who we trust, and who can follow our health protocols, who come in to meet the puppies and spend time with the puppies after the family visit. So at about six weeks, we start doing that. So we have people of all different ages, men, women. We have them wear hats. We have them wear different clothing. We have them in different sizes. We have children. We have every type of different circumstance we can think of to expose them to so that they learn that all these different people are great and these people want to come and look at them and make friends with them. Oh goodness, that's a lot of noise in the background there. Not too sure if maybe Reynolds can go look after that one. <laughs> Sorry that they're fussing. They want to come back out and have all the attention. Anyways, we want the, the puppies to be exposed to as many different types of people and as many different looks as possible so that when they go home with you, they're used to that, they're comfortable with that, and they're looking forward to new experiences as opposed to being afraid of new experiences. And that's part of what we mean by positive reinforcement. You don't want to take your puppy and expose them to a hundred different situations just because all the books say, make sure you take your puppies out and expose them to different things. You want those experiences all to be positive. So if your puppy is one who's a little bit more introspective and a little bit more thoughtful, who likes to assess situations, you don't want to take your puppy and charge off into the middle of a schoolyard when it's recess, for instance. What you would do with a puppy like that is perhaps start across the street on a bench, just with your puppy sitting, watching, listening, constantly giving your puppy reassurance by touching them, high value treats, and using a nice soft voice with them. Then you would move closer and eventually you would be in the schoolyard with all the children and by then your puppy would be perfectly content to experience that. If you have a more outgoing puppy, such as Brown Collar is right now, he'd be pulling you into the schoolyard and wanting to meet every single one of those children. Is one better than the other? Not necessarily. Mr. Brown Collar might find himself charging into a situation that was not positive and having something unfortunate happen, whereas another more quiet puppy might have avoided that by having the cautious nature. So it's just like people. There's not, not a good or a bad or a better than the other one. They're just different. And it's really important as the human that you recognize what works for your puppy. When is your puppy comfortable? When is your puppy uncomfortable? And it's your job to make your puppy comfortable. It's your job to protect your puppy. Now, Labradoodles have been bred to be what we call a very soft breed. And that's why they do so well in families and why they're so loving. But from being a soft breed, they also can be very sensitive to situations and sometimes to other dogs. Sometimes they don't have much tolerance for other dogs and they prefer humans. So again, if you're walking with your puppy and you see that your puppy is looking a little unsure about the dog that's coming towards them, make sure that you either go to the other side of the street or you put your puppy in a sit with you on one side and the puppy on the other, your puppy removed from the oncoming dog, and you just let your puppy know that you're there, you're going to make sure that your puppy's safe, give them a high value treat, and then let them decide if they want to make any contact with the other dog or not. Same thing with people. People come up to puppies all the time and go, oh, can I pet your puppy? Or they don't ask and they're just all hands in your puppy's face. That's totally overwhelming for a young dog. It's like, well, wait a minute, I don't know you. What are you doing? Why are you trying to hug me like that? So just be firm with people and polite and just say, just a moment and let me get my dog settled. Get your dog into a sit and then give, give the stranger a treat to offer to your dog. Tell them to go down to your dog's level and to not touch your dog until your dog is indicating that they're comfortable with that. So those are just some little tips to keep in mind for when you're socializing your puppy. You want all the experiences to be positive. Now what are you going to do if you try something and you have a wreck and it's a bad experience? The puppies have all had bad experiences. We make sure that each of them goes through at least one experience that's not positive so that they know how to handle that as well. So a good example of that happened, um, I believe it was this morning or last night. 
Uh, the puppies are all segregated behind an X pen to keep them safe from our other dogs. However, your litter is extremely clever. Surprise, surprise, given that they're Australian Labradoodles. And they have learned how to open the gate in their X pen if we don't keep it snapped shut with a snap. So they opened their gate and they were all out and our big dogs were all in here. Now our big dogs are all super nice and they'll play with the puppies. However, Ripple was in here too. Ripple is a mom. Her puppies are also in the doodle den now and Ripple is nursing her puppies. So of course your puppies from the Cafe Noir litter all converged on Ripple trying to nurse off of her and she was absolutely no way going to be sharing her milk bar with somebody else's puppies. So she turned and she was quite strict with one of the puppies with quite a snarl and quite an adamantly saying back off. And that puppy was a little bit, oh, what's going on? I've never had another dog be mean to me. Why are you, what are you doing growling and snarling at me? So that was a great experience for that, pu uh, not a great experience for that puppy in terms of the puppy was scared, but it was a great opportunity. We were able to take the puppy. All we did was pick the puppy up, couple of calm words, couple of strokes on the head, made sure they weren't shivering or anything or making it and we didn't make a big fuss out of anything put them back in the litter gave them five minutes to calm down then we brought the puppy back out made sure they were exposed to big dogs again and that was positive and all was fine so there's no long lasting negative consequence from the exposure but they all have to have something that happens to them that's not good it's just how life is so when that does happen just make sure your puppy knows that you're there to protect them, you're there to comfort them, and they're safe with you, and that's it. Don't make a big fuss over it all. You're, you'll end up with a puppy who's nervous. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is separation anxiety. Your puppy has no separation anxiety. No dog comes with separation anxiety. Separation anxiety is something that, as humans, we teach our puppies. And the best way to avoid that is to give your puppy time alone every day. Only has to be 10-15 minutes. Just put them in their crate, leave them, walk away. They need time on their own. Don't make a big production out of it. Open the crate, put them in, give them a toy or better yet give them a bone. Walk away, make sure they can't see you or th and they can't hear you. And build that time up so they're able to stay away from you for, for up to an hour. If you're going to do that um, when the puppies are really young, put an X pen around their crate so they're able to get out and walk around. Don't leave them locked in their crate um, right away for an hour. That's too long for an infant. But let them be in a room or somewhere all by themselves with nothing from any humans. If they cry and fuss, just ignore them. Just leave them. They'll get over themselves. But it's really important they learn to be on their own and they learn that that is nothing bad. Then when the time is up and you come back, whatever you do, do not fuss over your puppy. Don't go, oh, hi, Spot, mommy's back. Oh, I miss you so much. Oh, how's my baby? You don't want to do that at all. What you want to do is come in, open the door, don't say a word. Try to avoid even making eye contact for the first two or three minutes. Then just sit down and carry on just as if you'd been there all along. Same as when you leave your puppy, it's, oh, mommy, baby kisses, oh, I love you. Are you going to be okay? I'll be back really soon. I miss you. I love you. Don't do that. I do that. <laughs> we all do that naturally. But when you're getting your puppy and training them not to have separation anxiety, make sure you're strict with yourself and you don't do that. Just put them in wherever you're leaving them. Again, no eye contact, no nothing. Close the door, no nonsense. Walk out. That's it then you won't have any problem with separation anxiety and your dog will love you for doing that for them so that they're happy when you're gone, that they, their entire world is not dependent on you. These dogs need, are happy on their own right now and you need to continue that with them so that they have a wonderful, fulfilling life. Now, one last thing, positive reinforcement. You hear that all the time. What does that mean? Most of us, our answer is, Oh, that means when the puppy does something, we go, yay, that's great, way to go. That we focus on that, that we focus on what they've done that's positive. 
and we don't focus on when they do something wrong or something bad. And that's partially true. That's a big part of it. The other thing that's really critical is that you figure out what is positive reinforcement for your puppy. This is going to change from dog to dog. So for instance, with let's do Ripple and Peanut. For Peanut, positive reinforcement for her is food. Hands down, food wins for everything. She is an exceptionally affectionate dog and she's very devoted to us, but she will pick food over any person at any time. So if we want to give her positive reinforcement, we give her food. For Ripple, food is, she'll eat it, it's fine, but it is not something that governs her life. What governs her life is her relationship with me. She and I are very close, we're very bonded, so positive reinforcement for her is affection and praise from me. If Reynold gives that to her, she's like, oh yeah, okay, but it doesn't have the value that it does from when it comes from me. So you have to assess your dog and recognize and see what matters to them. Is it a hug? Are you the most important? Is it one of your children? Is it your spouse? What is it that makes your dog happy? Maybe it's going out the door and being able to run around for five minutes. Maybe it's a bone, maybe it's a liver treat. But it's just important that you figure out the highest value reward for your dog and that's what you use for positive reinforcement. You do that, you'll have a dog who's happy, you'll be happy because you'll have a really well adjusted dog who behaves exactly how you hope they will, most of the time, not all the time. They all have their little moments when they don't do what we want them to do. So that's it for this week. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video and found the information helpful and educational and I hope it was entertaining. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and we hope you've subscribed to our channel and are following us regularly and we look forward to seeing you again next week.